Hello and welcome back to Eigen Designs and today we're going to be taking some scrap wood and doing something kind of cool. These are going to be some catch-all trays that I'm going to carve out using the CNC and I'm going to be etching an American flag at the bottom. So I'm calling these freedom trays but you can put whatever logo or design you want on the bottom. These are really cool gifts and a clever way to monetize some of your scraps that might not otherwise have a way to make you any money. So if you want to see how I built these and how I designed them in Fusion 360, then hang around and I'll show you how. Let's go. I'm always looking for new clever ways to use some of the scraps and leftovers that I have from other projects. And the CNC gives you a lot of potential opportunities to use some of those. And today what I'm going to be doing is ripping all of my scraps down to one and a quarter inch width because I'm going to glue these up and then plane some glued up panels down to an inch thick exactly. And I'm going to be making some freedom trays out of those glued up panels. Now this is the first time I've gotten a chance to use my saw stop on a considerable amount of hard lumber and I'll tell you what it made really quick work of this hardwood. Once all my scrap boards were ripped I then sorted them by length so that I can make most use out of each of the glued up panels. For this particular video I'll be gluing up two separate panels that are roughly the same size uh, using a combination of walnut and maple. Now the dimensions of this it's about 8 inches tall by 15 inches wide so in the next step, when we get into Fusion 360, we can actually design some trays that make the most use out of the panels that we have. So while I was waiting for the boards to dry, I hopped into Fusion 360 and started out with a rectangular canvas that represented the dimensions of the glued up panels that I had just made. I elected to go with a rectangular shape with some radius corners, but you could easily use a circle or any other shape your heart desires. I was just trying to make the most use out of the available wood that I had. And then I took a, a vector file of an American flag and then put that at the very bottom of the container. But this is where you have complete creative freedom to put whatever you want to put there. If you've got a logo, a name, a quote, anything that you can fit in that space can replace the American flag and you'd get the same result. Once the design was done, I then hopped over to the manufacturing component of Fusion 360 to start creating my tool paths. I've tried to highlight with a magnetic bubble on the right hand side of the screen what some of the options were that I picked. But basically, I'm going to be stepping down at about 0.2 inches per step down. And the first tool path is going to clear out the center of the tray where most of the removal of material is going to occur. And the second tool path, I'm going to be using, um, again, another quarter inch end mill, and I'm gonna be tracing around the trays. And again, taking a 0.2 inch step down with each pass. And for the final tool path, I'm going to be using a V carve bit. So there's gonna be a tool change, which is why it's the third and final tool path. And I'm going to be carving out the American flag at a depth of 0.04 inches. Once I have all of my tool paths and I'm happy with the simulation, um, and you've checked that your router is not going to have any interference issues with the ledges of the tray. You then save that G code to post processing and send it to your Onefinity CNC for carving whenever you're ready. But before we get to that point, let's go back to the boards that have had enough time for the glue to dry so that we can start running them through the planer. Now, in Fusion 360, whenever you're designing something and you're trying to cut it out, the exact thickness of the material is important so that your cutout gets to the exact depth without going through your waste board. So I had specified one inch as the height of the material that I was going to be using. So I run the boards through the planer a couple of times to where the exact thickness of the boards was going to be one inch. Once I had achieved that, then I took the boards over to the CNC for carving. Okay. 
To get the piece ready for carving, I have to fasten it to the waste board and zero my one finity CNC. Now, because we are going to be etching around the very edges of this particular piece and we're utilizing almost all of the available wood, I'm using a trick that I didn't come up with, but I've come to really, really appreciate is using painter's tape on the waste board and your project and using a little bit of CA glue to hold it in place while you carve. I've had a few people ask me what the difference between homing and zeroing is on the CNC, so I thought I might explain that right now. Every time you turn off your CNC, it loses its relative position so it doesn't know where the boundaries are over its range of motion. So when you turn it on and you home your machine, you're reteaching it where the boundary conditions are for each of the three axes and its relative range of motion. Whenever you zero something, you are zeroing it for the piece of stock that you were about to cut. So it's relative to the piece of material that you're working with, and it will serve as a reference point for the tool paths that you created in your CAM software. So that's what you see me doing here. I'm using the touch probe to zero the piece of stock that I'm about to cut. But if you don't have the touch probe, you can also do this manually as well. So with our piece secured and our axes zeroed, we then access the G-code that we created earlier and begin the first of the three tool paths to create our freedom trace. To remove the stock that has been stuck to the waste board with CA glue, I just take the router wrench and slide it below the project in the T-Track slot and just pull up on it and it comes off really quickly. Now, even though the CNC does a great job carving everything out, it is a good idea to take a fine grit sandpaper just to do a once over to take off any rough edges and remove any burrs. So I head over to my downdraft table and use some 220 grit sandpaper just to take off all the rough edges and put a very slight rounded edge on each of the corners of the catch-all trays. You don't need to spend very long on this particular part. I probably spent about two to three minutes per tray and if you're trying to mass produce these to monetize your scraps, you really need to get this down to as minimal sanding time as possible. To finish these trays, I'm using a food safe mineral oil just in case we ever want to put any food or consumable products in these trays. Now, if you were going to try to produce these in large batches to monetize your scraps, it would be worth filling up some sort of a container with mineral oil and submerging the trays and setting them somewhere to dry rather than trying to finish each one by hand because this part is quite time consuming. So the final trays turned out fantastic. In terms of time spent on the CNC, it was probably around 15 minutes per tray, which could be further optimized by better speeds and feeds or even by having a larger piece of wood to begin with, you could batch these out in a bigger quantity. On Etsy, these go for about $30 to $60, depending on how big they are and what engraving and customization options you offer. 
So if you're looking for a way to monetize some of your additional scraps and potentially invest in new equipment for your shop, this could be a good idea. Or it could be just a really cool customized gift that you give to someone for any special occasion. All right, that's going to be it for this video. I've got a lot more CNC content coming, so hit that subscribe button, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.